to say good evening to all of you. Allow me to say good evening to all of you. Uh, Sister Dawson and Sister Jeanette and Sister Carolyn, good evening to all of you. Sister Charlene Reddix, uh, LaQuinta, thank God for all of you again for joining us uh, on this Thursday night Bible class. Uh, Sister Constance Williams, uh, it's just a blessing to see all of you God's people tonight. Sister Reese and Sister Taplin, and Sister King, I'm sorry, Sister Taplin King it is. Uh, we thank God for you, Sister Dorothy Hills, uh, Sister Claudette Hughes, uh, Fields, and Sister Deborah Williams. Good night to all of you. Good night to you, Sister Wanda Mallard. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday. Uh, Sister Rennell and Deacon Morris, good evening to you. Elder Stokes, I'm going to salute you, sir. Uh, Sister Tia Kose, Sister Baker, good evening to you. Texas, thank God for you, and Sister Othella, Sister Sharon Brown, Sister Darlene, my, oh my goodness, Frederick, on window, amen, thank God for you, uh, Sister Allison, Jasper, good night, make sure you share it with your family and friends, uh, let them know we're on tonight, Sister Sylvia DePlessis and Sister Gwendolyn Sell, share it with your family, your friends, your loved ones, let them know that we're on, Pastor Edwards, thank you for that great lesson last night. And thank you for joining us right now. The clock on the wall says it's 7 p.m. Deacon Winston Thomas in the building. So bow with me for a moment of prayer, if you don't mind. Uh, let's pray. Our Father, thank you, as always, for another blessing, another day, another opportunity to come before thy holy presence. We thank you, Lord God, for life and life more abundantly. We thank you for health and strength, favor and prosperity. Now, Master, as we come at this appointed time, never by chance and not by accident, but by your divine will, we ask a special blessing on all those who are watching as well as those who are listening. Continue, Lord God, to help them to operate in the overflow, allow their dreams and visions to come to pass. Bless their homes by the blood of the Lamb, Master. And Lord God, as your word go forward, allow us, Lord God, to become better Christian, better disciples because of it. So we love you, we thank you, and we honor you as always in the wonderful, mighty, and precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we do pray. Amen. All right, Sister Leslie Franklin and Brother Earl Sino, Sister Steele, Sister Landis, I feel Sister Linda Bannum, Sister Tracy Giles Hamilton, go with me to the book of Revelation. Uh, Sister Mary, God bless you, Sister Mary. I, I always share with others about our Sunday school teachers, and if you heard Sister Mary tonight, she did an awesome job tonight from the book of Galatians as she discussed our Sunday school lesson. So I, I thank you for that, Sister Mary Williams. Sister April Fleetwood, Sister Judge Brenda Hines, Sister Barbara Davis, good evening to all of you. Uh, Rose Marie, Rose Mary, my cousin, Richards, how you doing? Brother Perry Richards, God bless all of you. Go with me, Revelation chapter 22. We get ready to close out this book, Sister Deborah Mack. Brother Byron Jeff, we are closing out of this book. Uh, Shanita Kennedy Francis, we've been in this book for so long. Because it's the only book I've been reading lately. Uh, I know I've been reading others, but this book has just captured my attention and my imagination, Sister Jeanette Julian, for the past eight months. And I thank God for all of you who's been matriculating and walking with me as we walk through this book of Revelation verse by verse, chapter by chapter. And now we're coming to an end tonight, Sister Coma Green. So tonight, our lesson, uh, Sister Israel Green and Brother Melvin Benjamin, we're talking about when it's all been said and done. That's our lesson tonight. That's our lesson tonight, Sister Audrey Sano, when it's all been said and done. That's our lesson tonight, Sister Mary Duncan and Sister Madam DePlessis. Now we're going to come from Revelation chapter 22, verses 10 through 21, Brother Mike Eugene. Now we look at this lesson uh, tonight, when it's all been said and done, Sister Tracy Franklin Robinson, uh, what it talks about, it talks about when Everything that has been uh, prophesied to come to pass, Brother Martin LaFrance, has come to pass. Uh, everything that has been set in place is in place. It's done. And so the final results uh, that we've been anticipating, the final results that we were looking forward to, Brother Dedrick Dotson, has come to pass. And now, you know, that's what expression say when it's all been said and done. That means that's it. Uh, it's finished, you know. And so whatever's going to happen has happened already. And when you look at this book of Revelation, and we talk about when it's all been said and done, uh, I want to just uh, show you what, what he's talking about, because 
uh, in, in chapter one when when John was on his Isle of Patmos, uh, Brother Keith uh, Ephedron, and, and John was, was, was taken by the angel and sure things that must come to pass. And so now as we go through the book of Revelation, we're on the last chapter since Cassandra Miller, we'll see that the rapture has taken place. Uh, people have been raptured up to heaven. Uh, some have been left behind since Samantha McKnight Williams and, and those who have been raptured on, they're with, with, with the Lord. They're resting in Jesus. Uh, they have escaped the, the, the rudiments and the uh, trials and tribulation of the great tribulation. And so now the rapture has taken place and those, some have been left behind to take the mark of the beast. Uh, and do they want to take the mark of the beast? They have to suffer the consequences of the Michelle Lloyd of either being beheaded, boiled in oil, uh, set on fire by the Ryan Reddick, fed to lions, fed to hungry dogs, you know, whatever they do, that the devil was going to uh, go to a lot of hell. And I always say God uh, has prepared heaven, Sister Sophia Isaac, so you don't have to go to hell. But sometimes we have to go to hell down here, but they're going to go to hell because they missed the rapture. So all that's been said and done. They missed the rapture. Some have been raptured up. Some have missed the rapture. We see that the millennial period has taken place. We see that the false prophet and the, the beast and, and Satan have been uh, cast into the lake of fire. Satan has been, has been in chains for a thousand years. He has been let loose. And when he let loose, he gathered all his army to make war with the saints and with God. Sharon Pan, God sent fire from heaven, destroys them. So now all of that has been said and done because all of that, Brother Renard Williams, was prophesied and talked about Sister Helen Shelton. And God told us these things was going to happen. But the bad thing, Sister Bridget, is a lot of people heard what God said, but they wasn't listening. They wasn't listening, Sister Aisha, Aisha being me. And so now all that what God has said, all that what God has prophesied through the prophets and the patriarchs and all that, Sister Cynthia uh, Armstrong, all those things, has been said and done. So now it brings us to this final passage, this final chapter of the book of Revelation. And remember, this book of Revelation is a synopsis of what God is allowing us to see uh, in the future. A lot of things are not written in chronological order, but it's written for our understanding, okay? And so that's why I take us to this point here, Revelation chapter 22. And it talks about when all when it all been said and done since Latoya William. Uh, three points of consideration we're going to look at tonight, Brother Gregory Sino. Uh, first thing, the finished work. The finished work. We're going to look at that tonight, Reverend Joseph. The finished work. That verses 10 through 13. The finished work. Okay, Revelation chapter 22, verses 10 through 13. Then we're going to look at the faithful witnesses. The faithful witnesses. Sister Sheila Eugene, we're going to look at that. That's going to be verses 14 through 16. That's what it's going to be, the faithful witnesses, verses 14 through 16. And then we're going to finalize and come to the end of this lesson, this revelation, with the final words. The final words. That's Revelation chapter 22, verses 17 through 21. So we're going to round the stove. That's what we're going to look at tonight. So Jack Little Britt, that we're going to look at tonight when it's all been said and done. The finished work, uh, verses 10 through 13, Marie Lewis, the faithful witnesses, verse 14 through 16, and the final words, verses 17 through 21. So uh, go with me. Let's, I hope you have your Bible. Surround, surround the God. Good to see you. God bless you. Uh, good to see you. All right. Uh, I hope you have your Bible because I always tell you, it's good that you're listening to me. It's great that you're listening to me. But Sister Sylvia Lewis, I always tell you, it's good when you can see what God is saying. Because, you know, sometimes people want to question your Christianity and question your knowledge of the Bible, question you on the book of Revelation. You can actually tell them, listen, I heard what Pastor said, but not only that, but I saw what Pastor was saying also. And so that's why it's very important that you have a Bible, an iPad, an iPhone, if you have a Bible on that. So you can walk with me and you can see what God is finally saying, uh, Sister Princess Thomas. So go with me, Revelation. Chapter 22, I'm going to begin at verse number 10. Uh, verse number 10. Now remember, we talk about when it's all been said and done. He said right here, verse 10. Uh, this is John. And he said unto me, John, listen to what John said. And the angel said unto me, seal not the saying of the prophecy of this book. Now the prophecy is what God has said was going to come to pass, Mr. Darlene Frederick. This is Miss Beverly, this is what God has said going to happen. No matter what man said, no matter what man do, 
If God said it's going to happen, somebody listen to me good. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. If God said it, it's going to happen. He told John, don't, do not uh, seal up the prophet of this book. Here it is, write this, for the time is at hand. Oh, the time is at hand. Somebody put time right there. Time, time, the time, T-I-M-E. The time is at hand. What's so important about that? What, what's so important about that? What I, why do I want you to know about this time, Sister Frankie Johnson? First of all, because when God wakes us up in the morning, he gives us time to get it right. When God, when God put us to bed at night, he gives us time to get it right. Brother Ernest Jones, when, when, when God allow us to be on, uh, on, on lessons like this at the and, and to hear what he's saying through his men servant, that means that's time, the time to get it right. That's time. When, when we look in the mirror and we see little grays and little specks of grays and things, little wrinkles, that's time to get it right, Clemestine. So, so time is very important. Time is very important because we look at the calendar, that's time. The clock is ticking, that's time. And God has given all of us time. But now God is saying, time has run out. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That's what he said right now. Time has run out. The clock has stopped ticking. The calendar has stopped flipping. The watch is no longer working. That why did that mean time has stopped? Oh my goodness! Somebody gonna tell you this because you know we can say God is not right, Sister Deborah Wade. We can say, well, God, if I had one more day, God is saying one more day. I gave you forty years, fifty years, sixty years, seventy years. If we take all of that, forty, fifty, sixty years, and go by every second of the minute, every minute of the hour, every hour of the day, and multiply that, usually God gave you more time than we deserve. He gave us more time than we deserve. So God is saying, listen, all that time you had, Sister Mary Duncan, Sister Sylvia Lewis, God is saying, all that time I gave you, it's over. It's over. And there is going to come a day, my friends. Listen to me great. They listen to me good. There is going to come a time, Brother Tyrone Ben, when time as we know it will come to an end. We may feel good right now. We may be in good health. We may have money in our pocket. We may be driving good car, living in nice homes, eating the best meals, Sister Ben, Miss George Ben. But we don't know when our time is going to come to an end. And God is saying right here, don't seal up that book. Don't close that prophecy because guess what? God is saying for the time is at hand because I want them to see that I gave them time. I want them to see that I was on their side because, you know, I, I, I'm just a firm believer in this. When God wakes us up in the morning, that he's giving us another opportunity. Thank you, Alistair. Punch our ticket. When God wakes up in the morning, that's giving us another opportunity, another time to get it right, to correct all of yesterday's mistakes. So tell my, tell my daughter, say, Lord, I'm sorry for the mistakes I made yesterday. I'm sorry for all the time I didn't dedicate to you. I'm sorry for not setting aside 15 or 20 minutes of prayer hours for you. Or 15, I'm sorry for not setting time to read your Bible or to hear what the man of God is saying on Thursdays or Sunday morning. And God is saying, don't you seal that book? Because I want them to see from Genesis to Revelation that I gave them time. Because I gave them time to know everything. And so he told right here, he said, for the time is at hand. It's right now. It's right now. Somebody say right now. Evelyn Bentley say right now, right now. What happened? What would happen? Oh, my goodness. What would happen if God tapped you on the shoulder right now, Sister Flora Espadrome, and said, your time is up? Mm, mm, mm. Somebody talk to me right there. Uh, what would happen, Sister Jerry now, brother? If God tapped us on the shoulder and said, your time is up. And, and so, so because one day all of our time is going to be up. So God is saying right here, he said, don't you seal the sin of this prophecy for the time is at hand. And he want them to know. He want them to know because all of us, Sister Sylvia Lewis, all of us, Sister Rosemary Richardson, all of us, Sister Nita Harris, if the truth be told, we would tell God, Lord, give me one more day. Give me a little more time. Uh, you know, if God gave us, if God gave us, let me just hypothetically, let me just throw this out there. If God say, I'm going to give you 25 hours in the day, Sister Tracy Giles Hamilton, Tracy Rennell Giles Hamilton. If God say right now, I'm going to give you 25 hours in the day, what would you do with that extra hour? Know what you would do? The same thing you do with the 24 hours, squander it. You want to take that extra hour and say, Lord, I'm dedicating it to you. You want to say, Lord, I'm going to take that extra time and, 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 and serve you more. No, we wouldn't. We wouldn't do that. We wouldn't do that. So God has given us all the time we need. 
You know, if God doesn't give us another second, he's given us more than we deserve. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The plus, yes, sir. Look what he say. Look what he say. Verse 11. Why this? He says, he said, uh, he that said unto me, he said unto me, seal not to send up the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Now, watch what he said. Verse 11. Very important that we hear this. He said, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. God is saying, when I come back, listen to me good people. God is saying, when I come back to Patricia Thomas, whatever state you in, that's the state you're going to be in. Mm, somebody going to catch that. God is saying, when I come back to Dolly and Lewis, he said, when I come back, and no man knows the day nor the hour, we don't know when our time is up. That's why it's, it's, it's important, and it's coming upon us, Sister Wanda Mallet, that we live every day as if our time is up, okay? He said right here, he said, when I come back, when I come back, there won't be any more time. There won't be any more time. You won't have the time to say, Lord, give me another second. I didn't know you was coming because I told you already, no man knows the day nor the hour. So we have to be ready right now. I got to tell you again, be rapture ready. You know, I got to tell y'all again, because this is the last time I'm teaching out this book for a long time. We have to be rapture ready. Yes, this deal, we must be rapture ready. So right now, Sister Richardson, we must be rapture ready. So what happened, Pastor Edwards, if God comes right now, what he's saying is, when I come back, whatever state you're in, that's the state you're in. He said, he that is unjust, he going to still be unjust. He said, he which is filthy, he going to still be filthy. But the ones that are righteous, when I come back, he going to be righteous. And when I come back, the ones that's holy, he going to be holy. So the question goes out, if God came back right now, which one of these four would you be? Would you be, would you be unjust? Would you be filthy? Would you be righteous or would you be holy? Because let me tell you, I want to be righteous and holy and ready. Oh, somebody catch that. Righteous, somebody catch that. I want to be righteous holy and ready when Jesus come. That's me, Mr. Sister Ben. I want to be. But Walter Tardy, I want to be. I want to be. You know, we sing that song, oh, uh, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Well, guess what? You better, If you want to be in that number, you'll be rapture ready. You better be ready when Jesus comes because we don't know when he's coming. The problem with a lot of us, the problem with us, Brother Isaac, the problem with a lot of us, we somebody has bamboozled us. Somebody has hoodwinked us. Somebody have deceived us and told us that tomorrow is a guarantee. Somebody told us that. Somebody told us that. But we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what the next second holds. So here he said, when I come back, there won't be time to get right. Okay, that's what he's saying. When I come back, because the time is at hand. He said, when I come back, it won't be time to get right. It won't be time to try to get right. In other words, when I come back, I'm going to find you just who you are. My Lord, my Lord. Oh, my goodness. That's why people always say, don't let them catch you with your work undone. That's why the people always say, 99 and a half just won't do. Now, that don't mean why that we're going to walk on water and be perfect, but that means we have to have a love for Christ. We have to, have a, we have to live for Christ. We have to uh, be willing to live our life as if he's coming back right now. Now, that don't mean walk around with a Bible in your arms all day. That doesn't mean walk around quoting scripture all day. But you have to have the love of God in your heart because you don't know when he's coming. But I guarantee you one thing, my friend, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. So what I have to do, what I have to do to be ready? Be rapture ready. Oh, my goodness. Let's make you finish this lesson. So we're talking about the, he said right here, he said verse 12, he said, and behold, I come quickly. Oh, I love that word there. I come quickly. Somebody put quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly. Now, know what that word quickly means? That word quickly means unexpectedly. That's what it means. It means unexpectedly. That's what it really means right there, uh, uh, Sister Sharon Brown. It means unexpectedly. He said, I come unexpectedly. And when I come, my reward is with me. In other words, I have for you what you deserve already. I don't have to get, get it right because God has said, already have it. Already have it. Okay, already have it. he said. He said to give every man, this is what I love, according as his work shall be. Now, very important. Let me drop an anchor right there, if y'all don't mind. Let me just drop an anchor right there. Let me drop an anchor. He said right here. He said, and behold, 
behold means I want you to, I'm trying to catch your attention. That's what that word behold means. I want you to listen carefully. That's what that word behold means. That word behold means, can I speak to you a little bit? That's what that word behold means. He stop what you're doing and listen. That's what that word behold means. He said, listen to me. He said, pay attention to what I'm going to say. That's what that word means right here, Brother Tyrone Edwards. Pastor Edwards, I know you know that. He said, right here, he said, listen to me. Let's let, let, gather close. He said, I'm coming unexpectedly. He said, but when I come, when I come, my reward is with me to give every man, not some people, to every man according as his work shall be. Now, uh, you know, we all, we all, we all we have to stand before God because God is going to pay everybody, listen to me good, according to their Christian service. He's going to pay every man according to their Christian service. That means if you were sold out for Jesus and you live a God-fearing life, that means your reward is there. And the great reward, you know, we talk about we shall wear a crown and we're going to fly around heaven. I already told y'all nobody going to fly around no heaven. You're not, going, you're not going to be an angel, you know, when you die. You're not an angel. You are a saint. That's why I like teaching these lessons. You are a saint. You're not an angel. When you die, once you accept Christ, you are a saint. You don't have to die to be a saint. Once you accept Christ, you are a saint. And that word saint comes from the word sanctify, Sister Barbara Bentley. You know that. It comes from the word sanctify. That means we are set apart. And when we are set apart, we are established as saints. That's why Paul, Paul said to the saints at Galatia, to the saints at Thessalonica. That's why Paul called them that. We don't have to die to be a saint. And you're not, when you die, you're not going to be an angel. You are a saint. You are sanctified, set apart. So here he's saying, when I come back, because you have been a saint, because you have been sanctified and set apart to the Beatrice William, God said, I have a reward for you. Now, you know, I don't know what your reward is going to be. You know, maybe you're going to wear a long white robe. Maybe you have a crown on your head. I don't know. You know, the greatest reward we could get is being in heaven. But God has other rewards, you know, a uh, uh, soul for those who are, those who have a uh, uh, witness to others, there's, there's a reward for them, Echo Clark. God has all kinds of rewards for people, you know? And so the thing is, it doesn't make a difference as long as we get what God has for us. And God is going to bless us. Oh, my goodness. Somebody hear me good. He's going to bless us because we have been a blessing to him. But then on the flip side of this coin, those who gave no Christian service, those who did not love the Lord, those who thought it was too hard, to love the Lord, who was too hard to give up this world, who was thought it was too hard to go to church on a Sunday morning for one hour, hour and a half, who thought it was too hard to read a Bible, come to Bible class, you know? God said, I have a reward for you too. I have a reward for you too. See, God, what I love about him, or oh, what I love about him, he's, he's, he's like this. You can say he's fair, he's just, whatever he is, but he's going to give you, Sister Trinell Collins, he's going to give you what you deserve. He's not going to give you nothing else. He's going to give you what you deserve. And the thing is, ask yourself the question, what do I deserve? Because God just said right here, I'm coming unexpectedly. We use the word quickly, the word unexpectedly. I'm coming when you least expect me. But when I come, my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I shared earlier, I shared again. Because the Bible says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That, that everyone, everyone, may receive the things done in his body according to what he has done, Why this? whether good or bad. Now, the only thing that means, the believers, the believers, the believers, that's us, the believers, we're going to stand before the beamer seat of God, the mercy seat of God. That's what that word beamer means, the mercy seat of God. You know, we're going to stand before God and we're going to receive mercy. Somebody put mercy right there. Oh, my goodness. Sister Gwendolyn Silva, I love that word mercy. I love that word mercy. Sister Barbara Bentley, sing that song one day, Your Grace and Mercy. Sing that song, Sister Sinero Bailey. Uh, see, Barbara, Sister Bailey, Barbara Bentley can sing that song. And God is saying, listen, you know, we go, as believers, as saints, we're going to stand before the beamer seat or the mercy seat of God. But, but the unbelievers, the unbelievers, they're going to stand before the great white throne judgment. The great white throne judgment. And they're going to hear God say, oh my goodness, they're going to hear God say, I made you. Frankie Johnson, listen to this, Elvis Stokes, he's going to say, I made you, but I know you're not. Boy, you, whatever you do, you don't want to hear that. Lord, my goodness, you don't want to hear that, Sister Baker. Sister Jasper, you don't want to hear that. You don't want your living to be in vain. That's why I told y'all, Sister Mary Cola, wipe that movie, Sunday morning rapture. Please wipe that movie, Sunday morning rapture. 
because I'm not worried. I'm not worried because I know when the rapture take place, I'm going to be with the Lord. So shall I be with the Lord forever in the air. I'm not worried, and I know I'm going to stand before the mercy seat of God. And when I stand before God, I won't hear him say, well, Michael, you know you did this, you did that. The only thing I'm going to hear him say is, servant of God. Oh, my goodness. Boy. I got to chill on my own just now. Oh, my goodness. Servant of God, well done. Brother Oscar Ben, listen to this. You've been faithful over a few things. I'm going to make you ruler over many. Then they hear this, enter into the joy. Oh, my goodness. Don't that sound inviting? Don't that sound good? That's what we want to hear. That's why, as believers, we want to stand before God at the mercy seat, the beamer seat. Oh, I'm telling you, well, I'm, I know I'm preaching right. I know I'm teaching right. I'm teaching right. Somebody said, you're teaching right. Somebody said, you're teaching right. You're teaching right. I know I'm teaching right. You can't tell me I ain't teaching right. Since Darlene Lewis, I know I'm teaching this right because I, I, I know what the Bible says. He said, right here, I come unexpectedly. I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man, every man, according as his work shall be. That means why if you didn't do anything, your reward is you won't get anything. That's it. If you didn't do anything, your reward is you won't get anything. But if you've done something for Christ, because why this? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm going to say, only what you do for Christ will last. And only what you do for him, Deacon Winston Thomas, will be counted in the end. Boy, that makes sense. To Jack and Mac, that makes sense. Let, let me get this lesson. Boy, I, oh, I get excited, too excited. Let me, he said, verse 13, I am Alpha. This is the finished word. I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, the first and the last. What he's saying is, you can't get around me. He said, because I'm Alpha and Omega. He said, I'm the beginning and the end. You can't get around me. That's why Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man. Oh, my goodness. I hope y'all hear me good, Sister Yolanda Pleasant. No man, Sister Sharon Brown, come to the Father but by me. That's what God is saying, Brother Perry Richard. That's what Jesus is saying. No, Sister Emma Dawson, we can't, we can't climb our way to heaven, Miss Beverly. We can't work our way to heaven. The only way we can get to heaven is through the blood. Oh, my goodness. Through the blood, through the blood, through the blood. Quintero Hunter, through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only way, Sister Evelyn, we can get to heaven. And Jesus said, because I've been there in the beginning, and I'm, I'm going to be the first one you see to get to heaven, and I'm going to be the last one you see to get to heaven. I'm the beginning, and I'm the end, and no man can get around me. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my sister Sheila Damon, he's so high, you can't go above him. He's so low, you can't go under him. He's so wide, you can't go around him. Oh, you got to come in at the door. That means he is the door. He say, I am the door. Why don't I teach you this lesson right? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Let me, let me get out of here. He said, I am. Look how Jesus speak. And he's talking about the finish word. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. Since Joshua Toulouse, he said, I am the beginning and the end. I am the first and I'm the last. In other words, there's no one else. There's no one else. Oh, how that song go? I oh, searched all over. Couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Oh, my goodness. That's him. That's Jesus because there's nobody greater than Jesus. Nobody. And listen, serving the Lord, serving the Lord is the best thing we can do. I'm telling you, my friends, it's the best thing we can do because if we are faithful to him, he's going to be faithful to us. If we hold his hand, he's going to hold our hand. If we go a mile for him, he's going to go 10 miles for us. He can heal us. He can deliver us. He can set us free. Whatever you need, Jesus got it. Oh, my goodness. Verse 15, 14. Listen to this. This is Denise Ancalard, LaFrance, and Sherry Robinson. Look what the Bible says. Look what the Bible says. I want to say the Bible says. Somebody say the Bible says. Brother Wallace Peacock, my friend Bean. Look what the Bible says. No pastor ain't singing, Pimpy. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says. See, see, that's why it's important that you have a Bible because I want you to hear. When I say the Bible says, then you can say, oh, I, I know the Bible says that. You know, because a lot of times we quote stuff that's not in the Bible. We quote stuff. We misquote stuff. And that's why I always say, have a Bible. Have an iPhone, says Joyce Woods. Have an iPad that your Bible is on. So when you say the Bible say, and somebody says, how you know the Bible say that? And you can say, because I read it for myself. Okay? The Bible say, verse 14, bless are they that do his commandments. That's us. That's us. That they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into that city. We talked about that city last week. Because why this? When we follow his commandments, when we do what God asks us to do, uh, Chantel Jupiter, listen, 
He tells us, love our enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use us. He said, the, uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He gives us some commandments, some mandates, some, some things that we have to follow, okay? And, and, and listen, uh, and, and the thing is, once we follow him, Brother Charles said, once we follow Jesus Christ, then there's blessing that awaits us. Now, how many of y'all know the Lord will not allow us to follow him unless he has blessings that's coming ahead of him? <laughs> Catch that, somebody. You see, God is in the blessing business. I share with the church all the time. Nowhere in this Bible, if you find it, you bring it to me. Nowhere in this Bible, Sister Gwendolyn Seal and Sister George Woods, will you see God say, let me luck you. Let me luck you. Let me luck you. Sister Baker, Sister Allison Jasper, you don't see that. Let me luck you. God is in the blessing business. God said blessings and favor will follow you. He ain't saying no luck and, 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 and chance is going to follow you. Because as Christians, we don't operate in chance or luck. We operate in the blessings, why right, this, and favor of Almighty God. He said, right here, bless or day. Bless, that's us, who do his commandments, who do what God asks us to do, put the cross before us, the world behind us, who sell, who are sold out for Christ. And I'm going to say it again, that doesn't mean you have to walk around with a Bible in your arm all day, a cross around your neck all day, quoting scriptures all day. That just means you have to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and love your neighbors as yourself. That's all the thing is saying. You can't love me and curse me out at the same time. You can't love me and talk to me at the same time. You can't love me and backbite me at the same time. You can't do that. You can't do that. You might dislike some things I do, but you can't love me and hate me at the same time, says Deanna Pro. Look what the Bible says. Bless all they that do his commandments, that they may have the right. Here's the right. Here's this right, says the reader Smith. The right to the tree of life and to the gates into the city. That means the tree of life, as I shared last week, that tree that's on both sides of the river, uh, the water's clear as a crystal. On that tree, the leaves are good for the healing of the nations. It bears 12 manner of fruit. And listen, we speaking uh, uh, not 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 literally, uh, but but understand how God operates in the spirit. Those trees are there for the nourishment of our physical life. As long as that tree is there, as long as those leaves are there, we're going to have eternal life. That means those trees are never going to leave because that water that's clear of the crystal is nourishing those trees. That means the leaves are good for the healing of the nation. Even if we could get sick, those leaves would heal us. And why this? The, the fruit, those 12 men of fruit will nourish us. They will nourish us. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I hope you are listening to me. He said, you have a right to that. You have a right to that. And the only way you can get to that tree, somebody case this, the only way you can get to that tree, if you can get in that city. If you can get in the city. If you can get in the city. In heaven, for the believers, it's not a gated community. It's not a gate. I mean, we have access in and out. Now, to the unbelievers, they can't get inside those gates, okay? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Somebody shout hallelujah right there. Somebody shout hallelujah right there. Oh, that's a bless. That's a hallelujah right there. Just knowing that we are blessed because we have done what God asked us to do. Your blessings, oh, I think I say this once or twice. Your blessings does not come by how people treat you, but your blessing come by how you treat them. If you, if people talk with you, criticize you, put you down, it's okay. It's okay, says Priscilla Bill. Yeah, it's okay. That cannot stop your blessings. Your blessings will stop when you get on their level. Your blessing will stop when you start treating them like you like they treat you. Your blessing will come. Your your blessing will stop when you say, Man, put down my religion. Oh, come on. We're too old for that. We've been in Christ too long for that. To still be using those, those stupid vernaculars. Let me say it like that. Maybe that'll get somebody's attention. That stupid vernacular. I'm gonna lay down my religion. Ain't nobody gonna tell me no anything. Let me tell you something. As a child of God, Jesus said, turn the other cheek. In other words, walk away from that fool. That's what he said. Walk away from that fool. If they don't like what you're saying, look what Jesus said. Knock the dust off your feet and get going. Jesus said, don't stay there and fuss with nobody. Just, just knock the dust off and keep going. And you talk about, I'm going to put down my religion. you putting down what you don't have. That's why you're doing it. Because guess what? You never crucified that old man. And so a lot of times God is saying, we have to change, okay? That's why he said we are blessed to have the right to the tree of life and to be able to enter into that city. Oh, my goodness. Verse 15, why is this somebody? Why is this somebody? For without are dogs and sorcerers 
and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and make it a lie. God is saying right in verse 15, he's in verse 14, the blessings come to those who follow my commandment, Daniel Lewis. He said, he said, the blessing, that's right. Don't, I'm glad you could uh, say that, Danielle. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. Don't give God a reason to take his hands off you. Never give God a reason to take his hands off you. Listen to this. Sister Better Echo Love. He said in verse 14, the people who are blessed, that's us. That's us. That's me. That's you. That's us. Somebody put that on that. Me, you, us. Me, you, us. Put that on that. Me, you, us. We are the blessed people. That's us. Me, you, us. He said, because you are blessed, Monique Bellamy, he said, you have a right, Quintana Hunter, to come to the tree of life. You have a right to come to heaven, Darlene Frederick. You have a right to have all these things. Yes, that's what God is saying right here. Verse 14, you have a right to enter through the gates into the city. And in that city, remember now, it's a beautiful city. We talked about that last week. Streets are paved with gold, walls of jasper. You know, no need for light because Jesus is alive the world. Water is clear as a crystal. All those things. He said, you have a right to that. He said, but guess what? You're going to be inside the gate. Oh, my goodness. Me, you, us. Me, you, us, Kendra Marie. You, me, you, us. We have that right, Miss Ben. We have that right. Why do we have that right? Because why does sometimes when you go into gated communities, you have to have a card, and you have to swipe that card. You have to swipe that card. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We have to swipe that card. But sometimes, Sister Baker, that card may not be working. You know, somebody we might somebody may be behind us. We're trying to swipe that card. That card is not working. We can't get in. We got to get on the phone and call somebody. Security got to come. And they got to try to swipe the card and let us inside the gate. Now, we live inside that gate. Our belongings are inside that gate. Our family is inside that gate. But we can't get inside that gate because that gate, that swipe card is not working, Kathy Riley, my friend Kathy Riley. That swipe card is not working, so I can't get where I live. So now, what good is this swipe card? I live here, my family's there, my, my belongings are there, and I get there and I'm trying to get where I live, and my swipe card is not working. But what he's saying is this. What he's saying, what God is saying, when you come to heaven, you have a right to get inside that gate. Although down here that swipe card is not working, we won't have a swipe card up there, but we can walk in because we're going to be covered by blood. Oh, my goodness, somebody. We're going to be covered by blood. The blood, the blood is our swipe card. Oh, that's a good sermon. The blood is our swipe card. And why did, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And as long as we're covered by the blood of Jesus, because when God sees us, he don't see us, he sees the blood of Jesus. And because he sees the blood of his son, that means why did, we don't need a swipe card because Jesus has given us access. Oh my goodness, yes, I said it. He's given us access to the gates of that city, to the tree of life, and we can just walk in. But, Oh, verse 15 says, those who are not washed, covered by the blood of the Lamb. Those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Sister Baker. Those who have not, Sister, uh, Sister Deborah Mack. He said, they are considered dogs, which are called savages. That's what a dog is considered back in that day, a savage and a beast. He said, you are considered dogs and sorcerers, people who work in witchcraft, Sister Ben. And whoremonger, people who just do whatever they want to do. Why does and that whoremonger just mean people who who want to want to want to be with Christ and want to be in the world? That's what he called a whoremonger. People want to lie with the Lord, then lie with the devil. People want to drink from the good fountain, then drink the bitter water. That's what that is right there. That's what he's saying. He called them whoremongers. He said, "You don't know who you're in love with. You don't know who you want to be with." And God is saying, "Why is this somebody? I don't need you to go out and lay with the devil and bring me some incurable disease." Oh my goodness! Hallelujah. 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 Brother Kevin Isaac. That's why God said he don't play with the whole mongers. God said, no, you got to either you for me or you against me. Yes, that's what he's saying right there. He said, these whole mongers, these murderers who assassinate people, not so much with the knife, but with their tongue, who, who murder the, 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 the word of God. He said, that's murderers and idolaters, those who, who, who uh, bow down the statues and, and, and pictures on the wall. Uh, and, and, and these thick and false gods that bring the hind, just bring the hind. He said, whoever love it and make a lie, lie on you, lie on me, lie with the Bible and say that. God has said all of that. He said, these are the people who, write this, will never get into heaven. Never get into heaven. That's what he's saying right here. They will never, ever, ever get into heaven. So people who lie on you, listen to me good people, people who hate you, People criticize you for loving the Lord Jesus, 
for supporting your ministry, supporting your church, for loving your pastor. People talk with you, run the church every Sunday. What happened is you're going to see them on the outside of the gate. And guess what? They don't have a swipe card to come in because they're not covered by the blood. They may be excited about living behind a gate down on this side, but they'll never get on the gate on the other side. And the gate they're going to get in up there or down there, why did that? They won't be able to get outside that gate either. Oh, let me get out of here, y'all. Look what it say. Look what it say. Let me get it. He said, I, Jesus. They come to you. Remember, you come to witnesses now. He said, because we are blessed. We are blessed people. I want you to know tonight, you are blessed. In spite of what you're going through, what your body may be facing, what people may be saying about you, I want you to know, from me to you, from God telling me to tell you, you are blessed people. You are blessed. You are blessed. Don't ever forget that. You are blessed. Who, me? Yes, you. Yes, you. You. You are blessed. Yeah, you. You are blessed. He said you are blessed. He said because you keep his commandments. He said, but the other ones, the, 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 the Brother Milton, the dog, the soldiers, the whoremongers, they shall never come in. Never, never, never. Then he said, verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Jesus said, listen, I've sent these things to the churches because the, the word is, once the word comes to the churches, we are without excuse. He said, I've sent my angel to testify unto these things into the churches. And guess what? I would be remiss in my duty. If I get up there on a Sunday and try to tell you something that God didn't tell me, I would be remiss in my duty if I get in a Sunday and tell you I have nothing to preach. I would be remiss in my duties if I get up there and preach or teach a lie to make you feel good so you don't leave the church. Then guess what? That's not what God called me to do. God called me to preach the truth and to encourage and to, to challenge his people that they may end up in heaven and not in hell. And sometimes, listen to me, in 21 years of pastoring, that have caused people to leave the church. Because guess what? I was too raw for them. You know why I was raw? Because I said, the Bible said. That's how I preach and teach on a Sunday and on Thursday. I say, the Bible said. And because I said, the Bible said, they thought I was too raw because they wanted me to water it down, to make it feel good. No, no, no. It feels good to get to heaven. But I'm not going to try to make you feel good to stay in the church and then God punish me for telling a lie. So right here, he said, right here, he said this to the churches. And it's every pastor's job to tell the truth. Now, if we don't tell the truth, why is this? If we don't tell the truth, then we're going to be like those people in verse 15. We're going to be on the outside of the gate trying to get in. And guess what? I'm not giving up my mansion for nobody. Oh, no, indeed, Lord. No, indeed, Lord. He said, I am the root and offspring of David. I give life. That's what he's saying. And he said, I give life. And he said, I'm the bright and morning star. He said, I shine bright in everybody's life. I give you life and I shine bright in your life. That's what he's saying. I'm the bright and morning star. I shine brighter than any star you could ever see in the sky. I, I shine brighter than any, any light. He said, that's why he said, I am the light of the world. You know, that's, that's Jesus. And listen, he tells us all these things. He said, but I've sent my angels to testify of these things in the churches. And, and listen, hear me good, people. I'm not telling you leave your church. I'm not telling you leave your church. But if your pastor is not preaching and teaching truth, you better get the hell out of there. Now, I'm going to put it like that. You better get the hell out of there unless you want to sit there and, and feel good on heaven and suffer in hell. Uh, 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 uh. I'm like, pastor, pastor, hold up. I hear what you're saying. Tell me what the Bible say. <laughs> you know, tell me what the Bible say. <laughs> I wonder what the Bible say because I'm trying to get to heaven. You know, it's a, make me feel good this Sunday. Preach about money coming and all that. But I don't need to know about no money every week. And then when I'm dead and gone, my children are spending my money. I'm in hell suffering. No, uh -uh. tell me the truth. Tell me what the Bible say. Oh, my goodness. Verse 17. And the spirit. Here it is, the final words. This is a really great book. This has been a great book, Darlene Lewis. This has been a great book. He said, and the spirit, Holy Spirit, and the bride say, come. Look at this great invitation. And let him that hear it say, come. And let him that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, oh my goodness, let him take of the water of life freely. Christ is saying, I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to twist your own. I'm going to send a preacher every Sunday to make sure you hear the truth. I'm going to send a preacher every week to give you a Bible lesson that you can hear. I'm going to make sure on the radio there's a song that's being sung about me. 
I'm going to make sure that somebody is praying to you, or praying for you to me. He said, I'm going to do all those things. He said, but I'm not going to force you. He said, because I'm going to give you this great invitation. He said, the spirit said, come. The bride said, come. He that hear it said, come. And he said, when you come, let him that are thirsty for the truth come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Somebody put free. Somebody put free. Somebody put free. Freely. Freely. Not forcing you. Freely. God said, I'm not forcing you. Freely. And that's the word. Because he could make all of us do whatever he wanted to do. But God wants us to love him because of him, not in spite of what he's given us. And so the question goes out, are you coming to Christ freely? Or are you just uh, trying to fake it till you make it? Because this is a great invitation, verse 17. I've seen people, I've seen people get an invitation for weddings and parties and go out and spend money on clothes they know they can't afford to spend. Buy shoes, buy false hair, false fingernail, false eyelash, get haircuts, get suits, get clothes, fall off their behind, go buy new shoes to go to a party for 30 minutes or 40 minutes of party, and then they won't come to Jesus and spend eternity with him. We do all of that to go to, to take that invitation to go to a party, but we won't take the invitation to come to Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Something wrong with that, people. Something's wrong with that. How do I know? Because the Bible says, the Bible says, for I testify unto every man, verse 18, that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book. God, look what Jesus says. For I testify unto every man that heareth the word of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. God is saying, I've given you enough word from Genesis to Revelation to get mankind saved. He said, I've given you uh, examples. He said, I've shown you how people can be healed. I've shown you how people can be delivered. I've shown you how people can be set free. I've shown you how we can beat the devil. He said, I've shown you we can we, we have a uh, victory. Over, all, over everything. He said, I've given you all of that because the Bible said it. He said, right here. He said, but if any man, and that's dealing with, with, with people who's preaching, preaching in the pulpit. He said, if any man get up there and distort the gospel or twist the gospel or change the gospel for their own ways or to make people feel good or to be liked and loved by people. God said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take their part out of the book of life. Because guess what? You can make five people in the church feel good and cause a thousand to go to hell. And God is saying that's not going to happen. So that's why he said, if any man take away from the word of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life, and he will not go in the holy city. And from the things which are written in this book, that means no blessings, no favor, no breakthrough, none of that. None of that. God's taking all of that from you. So God is saying, listen, the way I tell you, Tell it, that's the way I want you to tell it. I want you to tell it where people can understand that they have to be rapture ready. They have to be rapture ready. I want you to let them know that, listen, get their life in order. I want you to tell them that it's all right to enjoy life, but abundant life comes through knowing Jesus Christ. I want you to tell them that, listen, uh, the Bible says to Reuben Smith, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's what he's saying. He said, I want you to tell him the truth. He said, I don't, listen, I, I drive, I drive an Escalade, a Cadillac Escalade, a 2015. It's not brand new. I drive, I drive a pickup truck every day. I don't need to lie to people to drive a Cadillac. I'm not doing that or to have big anniversaries and all that stuff. I'm not lying to people and, and sit down there with, a, with my wife got a hat big as the cross Jesus carried. We sitting there smiling and, and, and people coming there bowing at our feet and, and throwing money at us and him riding around in the best cars and uh, a big old house and all that and rings on every finger and I've, I've caused you and your family to die and go to hell because I'm so worried about you looking at me and building me up and making me feel good that I don't care how you feel. I don't care about your end results. And so God is saying, no, I'm going to hold you responsible. He 
is I'm going to hold you responsible because your job is to preach and teach truth. Your job is to tell them what the Bible is. And God said, and if you take away from if you add to it, or if you take away, people, uh, pastor, that was talking about, uh, uh, if you don't, if you don't sow a seed of a hundred dollars, a blessing won't come your way. Let me tell you something. You don't pay your tithes and offerings, then you're under a curse. That's what happens. When you don't support your church, then you're under a curse. And then you send no hundred dollars to this preacher or that preacher, and he's going to send you a handkerchief or a card or spit on a piece of paper and send it to you. It ain't about that. It's you doing what God asks you to do. And God is saying we have to stop manipulating people in that pulpit. We have to stop sitting in that place of authority and manipulating people because God has given us a platform to help people, not hurt people, to pray for people, not pray on people, to lift people up, not to tear them down. That's our job. That's our job. And God said, if you don't do it, here it is. If any man, oh my goodness, hallelujah, praise the Lord. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, and he's talking about causing people to go to hell, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. That means God is going to blot your name out of the book of life. And it's one thing, boy, oh my goodness. It's one thing, it's one thing to preach people to heaven and to preach to die and go to hell. My Lord. He said, and God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in the book. Oh my goodness. Oh, I got excited. Verse 20. He which testified these things said, surely I come quickly. Surely I come unexpectedly. And then the word is, amen. Somebody put amen right there. Amen. That means I agree. That means I agree. Is that what the word amen means? I agree. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Sister Melanie Wolf, that's saying, Lord, I can't wait till you come. I'm enjoying life down here. And I tell people, I love, I life, I love life down here. I love being on earth. I love being on earth. I love seeing your faces. I love waking up every day, see the birds fly. I see, like see the river flowing. I love where I live. I love my neighbors. I love the church. I love this Facebook family. I love all those things. But guess what? None of that compared to the love I have for Jesus Christ. That's why every day I live my life to be rapture ready. That's why every week, every chance I get, I tell people, be rapture ready. That's why when people say, pray for me, I say, let's pray right now. Because I'm human. I may forget to pray for you when I get home. I say, let's pray right now. But God believe prayer still works, okay? So he said right here, he said, he that, he which testified these things said, surely I come quickly. That's Jesus. I come quickly. He said, amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Last verse, thank you, Holy Spirit, for this beautiful lesson from San Diego. He said, the grace unmerited favor of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Oh, listen to that. This is how, this is how, how the Lord closes out. He said the grace, the unmerited favor, the undeserved favor of God, of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Then he said amen. Amen. That means I agree, I believe, I accept it. That's what he's saying right there. I have the blessed assurance. Oh my goodness. So thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for all of you. This has been a great book. This has been a fabulous, fascinating book, a marvelous book. And I thank God that God allow us to go through it together. And I, I appreciate all of you who've been walking with us through this book uh, for the past eight months. Oh, my goodness, I don't know what I'm going to teach next time. I, I got something in my mind, but, Lord, I got three, four things in my mind because I'm so busy working on this book of Revelation. But I uh, give God praise. I give God honor. I give God glory. And truly, I thank God for each and every one of you uh, because truly you are a blessing to the body of Christ. And I pray God's choice blessing upon your life. I pray again that we are rapture ready. I pray that we share with our family, our friends, our loved ones, our children, our grandchildren, our parents grandparents, but most of all to ourselves, that we can be rapture ready, because we don't know when he's coming. But this book of Revelation tells us when he comes, we should be ready. Because guess what? I don't want to go through that tribulation. People used to say, oh, I want to be in that number that John saw coming through hard trials and tribulation. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's, that's tribulation saints. That people who missed the rapture. That people got to suffer to get to heaven. You don't want to be in that number. Don't don't say that. Don't quote that no more. You know, when you hear people in church say that, just shake your head, but don't say anything. 
You don't want to be that number because that's people who miss the rapture. I want to be that number that John's are going through hard trials and tribulations. Why should I want to go through hard trials and tribulations when God can just rapture me up and take me to be with him? That's saying when people say, even the blessings, oh, I want to come on the rough side of the mountain. Why do, why do I want to come on the rough side of the mountain? Because I can speak to my mountain. See, that's why we got to know what the Bible say. Oh, my goodness. I know y'all. That's enough of that. Oh, my goodness. That's what the Bible say. Okay. Listen, quick announcements. Quick announcements. Thank you again for being with us. And I do mean that all of, most of you have pastors and preachers that you listen to every week. But yet you take the time to join us. And I'm so appreciative of that. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it lightly. Because I thank God for all of you just for sharing with us. And remember, I said it once, I said it again. This book is not for debate or arguments. Don't you go to your pastor and say, Lord, let me tell you what Pastor Giles said. It's not about that. Because God may give him a different revelation on it. God may show him something different. It's not about debate. It's about edification. It's to edify you. And you that's why I say keep your Bible open. And you can always write down notes. If I say something that you don't agree with or you don't believe, write it down, research it, then come back and say, Pastor, this is what I read. This is what I got out of it. And we'll compare notes. But we're not going to argue. We're not going to debate. And I'm praying that you do not argue with your pastor over something you heard or somebody said. Okay? Okay, that's the way you keep your, your window open. Because God has not given us a word for debate. Uh, uh, quick announcement. Church anniversary is coming up quickly. Church anniversary is coming up quickly. It's going to be Thursday, June 9th at 7 p.m. It's going to, and then we're going to have our family day on that Saturday, June 11th, uh, from 12 noon until 5 p.m. From 12 noon to 5 p.m. Everyone is invited. Please hear me. Everybody on this Facebook, everybody on this call line, your family, your friends, your loved ones, everyone is invited to come out and share with us on our family day. It's open to the public. It's a community event sponsored by the Bethlehem Baptist Church family. That's why I love those people at Bethlehem. They don't argue, they don't fuss, they don't fight. We just have a great time and we want everybody to just come and be blessed with us. So it's open to everybody. Uh, then Sunday, June 12th, uh, we're going to come to everything doing our 9 a.m. worship service. So we have that, that Thursday night at 7 p.m. That Saturday from 12 to noon, we have something for kids and adults, everything, volleyball, baseball, basketball, we have water slides, we have everything. So please come out. Uh, you know, if I hit, hit your home, uh, ribs and chicken and all that good, hamburger, hot dogs, all that good stuff, uh, snowballs, uh, it's going to be a great time. And and Sunday we're going to come there and just have a great time during the 9 a.m. hour. And I ask, I ask, I don't never force, I always ask the church family, anybody who want to do it, we ask for a pledge. Uh, this year our pledge is $157, and that's only for people who's able to do it, because I don't know your pocketbook, I don't know your financial situation. If you're able to, we would appreciate you for blessing us. You know, every member at Bethlehem already know we always ask for a pledge every year. It's not the first time we've done it. We've been doing it every year. So uh, those of you who can make a pledge and want to join in, you're more than welcome. And, and let me share this. Uh, I, I, I shared with Bethlehem members Sunday. I want to share it again that we've ordered some shirts. We ordered some shirts. And unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, the shirts were designed for membership, okay, uh, for members of the church. And a lot of people were putting people names on a, on a list who wasn't members of the church. Now, we do have some... Uh, we're going to have some shirts for our Facebook family because there are some people on this Facebook every week who financially support the, ch uh, the church, who faithfully send uh, tithes and offerings to, to our church. And so we consider them, although they may not walk across the, the seal of the church, we still consider them as a member, a Facebook member. And so we're going to have shirts for them. But we unfortunately, we can't supply shirts for everyone because we'll be at almost uh, 500 to 1,000 shirts. So if you have a family member, you have a family member that you invited to the family day. Listen to me. They're more than welcome to come. Please bring them. But if you have a family member and they're not a member of the church, and not a member of the of the Bethlehem family, if you want to buy a shirt for them, the shirts are $7. That's what we're paying for the shirts. We're not making a dollar off the shirts. We're not charging a member for the church. For the shirts. If you want to have a shirt for your family member, maybe it's your grandson, your niece, your nephew, whoever, uh, the shirts are $7. Please get with Sister uh, Quinn the enemy. Uh, that's Gabby's mama. Or uh, you get with Shanita Francis, Ken Kennedy Francis, or uh, with my lovely wife, Pamela. They're, they're in charge of that. Uh, get with them. Uh, unfortunately, we want to make sure that everybody have one, 
but unfortunately we can't supply for everyone in the community. So I do apologize for that. So if you want to buy a shirt for your niece, nephew, or whoever who's not a member of the church, then it's seven dollars. That's what we pay for it. That's the only thing we're gonna charge you. So we're not gonna make a dollar off it, okay? Uh so please join us, but make sure you join us for that event and it's open to the public. I want everybody to just come and have a great time. Just have a great time. We haven't gotten together in two years. So now is that time again where we can come and feast and fellowship one with another. Uh, let me say uh, happy birthdays uh, today. Uh, normally on Folk Sun, on Folk Thursdays and Folk Sunday, we announce birthdays. But I just want to give a shout out for birthdays today. Uh, Sheila, that's She Devil. It's really Sheila. It's really She Devil. We call her Sheila. Sheila Eugene. She made her birthday today. But really, her name is She Devil Eugene. But we call her Sheila Eugene. Her birthday is today. Uh, Sister Maxine Sino. Uh, so Deneen Wilson, they made their birthdays today. So we say happy birthday to all of them. Uh, we pray God give them many, 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 many more birthdays with good health and favor. So happy birthday to all of you. But if you have any birthdays, send it to me. We're going to announce it on the Folk Thursday and the Folk Sunday. And I'm giving a shout out because today is their birthday today. And if you have any uh, children who's graduating from kindergarten, high school, college, Make sure you give me that. Give it to me Sunday. We'll announce that also. So we want to just give honor to whom honor is due. Tonight, as we're going to go, I want to pray for Sister Danielle Lewis, uh, Sister LaShanta Le Le McCoy, uh, Miss Marion Reddick. I want to pray for Miss Marion tonight. I want to pray for uh, Brother Bernard Williams, Sister Gloria Rue, and I want to lift up the Riley and Griffin family in the passing of Sister Gloria Riley. I want to lift them up in prayer tonight. Uh, and all of you God's people, listen, I just always do, and I want you to do it again. If there's an area on your body that's giving you discomfort, that's the word I use, discomfort. I want you to touch it right now. Touch it. And we're going to believe that God's healing power is going to come from on high and going to be transferred from, from him to you. So please touch whatever area of your body is giving you discomfort. If it's your finances, if it's your faith, whatever it may be, just put in your spirit, put in your head, and watch God do what he does best. Okay? And that's touch, heal, and deliver, and set free. Let's pray. Our Father, thank you, Master, for a great and grand time. Truly, your word is so rich and relevant in these last and evil days. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to see what you are saying to us and for us through this book of Revelation. Truly, Lord God, you have revealed yourself to us. You have revealed your secrets, Lord God, to us that is no longer a secret, Lord God. Now we know what you expect from us. Now we know what you want us to do. Now we know how you want us to live. Now we know what the end result shall be. So Lord God, we thank you, Master. After it all been said and done, we know what you are saying to us and for us. So bless your people, Master, who have so faithfully and diligently week after week after week listened to what we have to say in the, in the way, Lord God, we we'll lift up your name. Bless us, Lord God, and keep us, Lord, like only you can. And Lord God, if there's any member who's listening to my voice, who's going through something, whose body is being challenged right now, any discomfort. We pray, Lord God, divine healing right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Touch, heal, deliver, set free. We pray a special blessing on Miss Marion right now. We ask you to touch her body, Master, uh, from the top of her head down to the sole of our feet. We pray for Brother Mr. Brownie right now, Lord God, her, her husband, her squeeze, her lover, her friend, her Lord, for 60-something for years of marriage. We pray for him, Lord God. Uh, that he would be continue to be by her side, Lord God. We pray for that family unit as a whole, Lord God. And Lord God, for all those who are listening to the sound of my voice, that, Lord God, you would meet us at our point of need, Lord God. So thank you right now for this time of, of, of coming together. Lord God, give us a great night rest. Be with us tomorrow. And Lord God, help us, Lord God, to be rapture ready. So we love you, we thank you, and we honor you, Lord God. And we give you all your name to praise. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Bless you. Thank God for Miss Joyce Ben, Yvonne Ben, for being Teacher of the Year in St. Bernard Parish. Amen. And we thank God for Miss Ben. Congratulations goes out to Miss Ben, my favorite sister-in-law. So y'all remember that. Remember that, Otella. Don't get it twisted. Good night to all of you. I love you, but God loves you more. Take care.